Corey and I have stole away out here to the shade to give you a little update of sorts and talk for a few minutes, mostly about the cookbook. But we will talk a little bit about just what else has been going on. Our garden is just looking wonderfully lush and beautiful. We're not eating out of it yet. Corey did pick some peppers, though, from mine this morning. I think you've already been picking peppers at your house, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, of course, we've been eating the spring stuff, like onions and lettuces and spinach and those kind of things. We've got lots of tomatoes, but none ripe yet. Um, the little blueberry ones, I've been, they're looking blue, so I've been like feeling of them every day, hoping one would be feel soft and I could try it, but so far, they're still, still just ripening on the vine. But everything's really looking good. Everything's looking good. I had several people ask about water and how me and Matt water our, our garden. Well, we are so lucky in the area that we live here in Southern Appalachia. This is like a temperate rainforest and we get a lot of rain. So normally we don't water uh, our garden. Now we did water those, the tomatoes and the peppers when we first set them out, we watered them for maybe two or three days in a row. And then probably it rained by then and then that was it. We didn't water them anymore. But when we plant seeds, we typically never water them. We just wait on the, the next rain that's bound to come pretty soon. This year, it went a week with no rain, and I was getting antsy about it, and I said, Matt, let's water the garden. So we did. I think we watered it twice, maybe. And then, the very next day, it rained. And then since then, it's rained at least, what, every other day, something like that. Typically, we get, uh, if it's not a front coming through, then it's thunderstorms, even, even in thunderstorms. We've had those for the last few days. In fact, we had some overnight. I heard it thundering, and I wondered if it was raining. And then when I got up this morning, it had rained for sure. So thankfully, we live in a place we, we don't really have to water very much. But if we do, if we are, Okay, we, something just fell out of a tree or a tree just fell. What was that, Corey? I don't know. I don't know. Corey's gonna go look. Sounded like a big branch falling maybe out of a tree. It's way too big to be a squirrel. I bet it was a branch falling. Anyway, but when we do water, like watering the tomatoes or the peppers when we first planted them or when I made Matt water the seeds, we just do it by hand. We have lots of water in cans and we just do it by hand. If there's places where the water hose will reach, Matt will use it some, but mostly we just water, water by hand when we have to water, when we're kind of forced to or when we first plant something. Well, what was it? Did you see anything? The branch must be off the bank. Right? Yeah, it must see. not be. Sound like a big branch is what yeah, I was big, but it was. what I would guess it was. So Corey, you want to tell us about what your garden? How's it going over there? It's going pretty good. We've discovered that we've had a little bit of deer damage. We know that we have deer there. They got like one of the blackberries, just a nibble off of it, a nibble off one of the elderberry bushes we just planted, a uh, nibble off some of the daylilies. So actually tonight we're going to try to see if there's anything that we could do. We definitely still have slugs. But, I mean, we're still growing stuff, you know, fighting off this stuff, trying mm -hmm. to take it, but... Corey's been making the best salads out of her little garden. They yeah. are really good. And made some delicious salad dressing to go with them that we've all fell in love with. Salad dressing's good. I'm going to make a big salad tonight for supper. You should do supper. a video on your channel. Not today, maybe, but when you have time and show how to make it, because it's really, really good. It pleased all of us. We're all kind of picky about our salad dressing. Uh, and Corey tells us it was healthy, healthy salad dressing. Yeah, it was. It's it's yeah. really easy to make and it's tasty. The problem with most salad dressings is that they just have like nasty oils. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't use olive oil because it has a strong taste, mm -hmm. or can have a strong taste. It doesn't to me, but yeah. But it was a just a recipe I got off the internet for Italian dressing, and it was good. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Maybe you can do a video about it. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be nice. That's kind of nice, though, that Corey grew. I mean, I've got lettuce and spinach and onions and stuff here, but that she's been making it at her house with her stuff and then bringing it for us to enjoy when she comes over here to work or whatever she's doing. So she's let us let us share in it. And, of course, she's been helping me cook for Miss Cindy. We're trying to make sure she eats good, so she likes salads. So that's been, been nice. Yeah. Real rewarding to... Uh, go outside and get what you planted and eat oh, it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's been awesome. I've been buying tomatoes and cucumbers, but I can't wait for those to yeah. come in. TB. Then you make your whole salad out there. Yeah. Yeah. All of it. 
one other thing people a few people had mentioned lately uh, if you watch all of our videos you probably have noticed that on the weekends and on Fridays I especially share like a little music clip well if you click on that little video and watch it if you look in the comments or in the description I always put click here for full video well when you click usually sometimes you're going to Corey and Katie's channel the Presley girls but most of the time it's leading you to the blind pig and the acorn YouTube channel so that's a YouTube channel that we started back in 2008 and it's just kind of an archive of our family's music lots of Paul and Pap on there you can see Corey and Katie kind of grow up, see how young they were before they played instruments. Probably some where Corey was playing the fiddle instead of Katie. Um, oh, and man. see my nephews in a lot of them. So uh, Blind Pig and the Acorn, you can look for that YouTube channel if you want to. Or if you see those little shorts and you click on them, they'll always be that. For full video, click here and, or go here and you click and it'll take you to the full video of whatever I'm sharing that day. But I've had several people say they really look forward to the shorts. But I know if you if you like those, you'd really like you really like that whole channel full of music. There's a lot of treasures on there, isn't there, Corey? Yeah. We're really really thankful for uh, all the music that's on there, all the videos that uh, like of Corey and Katie growing up. That's wonderful. But especially those of Pap since he's gone. So many Sundays we spent down at Paul's picking and grinning. Uh, and we didn't film everything, but but it did that did get having that channel and having my blog Blind Pig and the Acorn did give us a reason to let's let's try this song and video it. Of course, at the time we were just doing it for the blog, not really realizing someday that'd be a true treasure. Yeah. So we're so glad, so glad that we have that. Um, we wanted to to update you about Miss Cindy. We're so grateful for all the cards and the. The prayers and the information and all the things that people have shared with us we could never thank you enough we're really grateful and it really means a lot to us and we can feel those prayers we know they're holding us up helping her with her her pain and her sickness she's doing um, i guess about the same as the last time we kind of gave an update i do think her pain has increased we were at the doctors this morning and they're working with us to try to find a solution for that because we, we don't want her to be in pain, of course. So wonderful doctors and they're, they're really kind and really helping us with that. So um, that's kind of the update of where it stands now. She's resting a lot, sleeping a lot and enjoying being with us. We're enjoying being with her. So she's she's hanging in there, and we really do appreciate those prayers and the and the cards and the like I said the emails and the information everything that's been shared. We really really appreciate it. So for the cookbook news, well the cookbook news is that it's still selling wonderfully, still doing great. If you've missed getting to getting to see the cookbook, this is it. We're so thankful for everyone that's bought it. Thankful for the kind of the good reviews that people have been leaving. We really appreciate that, and. It's just been so wonderful to go out to some of the events that we've been doing, the book signings, and meet people. So rewarding and so wonderful to uh, meet people. So many people that have, they've shared their stories with us and kind of seeing faces and now be able to put the face with the comment, people that comment a lot on our videos. It's been really nice, hasn't it, Corey? Oh yeah, it's been awesome. It's been so wonderful. We've really enjoyed it. So we still have a few left. Um, this weekend, Corey and I will be going to Roanoke, Virginia. This is at the Mass General Store in Roanoke, Virginia. So it's in downtown there, downtown Roanoke. And it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on June 10th. That's Saturday. So Corey and, I, Corey and I will be doing that one. I'll go ahead and tell you the following weekend, that's our last Mass General Store that we have scheduled. And that one is in Boom. Well, there's two. At June 17th, so that's the following week, will be from 11 to 2 in Boone, North Carolina. And then from on June 17th, the very same day, from 3 to 6, will be in Sugar Grove, North Carolina, which I'm, they're telling me is really close. The stores are really close together. And then in July, on July 1st, at 3 p.m., 3 p.m. on July 1st, we'll be at City Lights Bookstore in Silva, North Carolina. And there's some more in the works kind of right now. And when those details are kind of locked in, I'll share those, those uh, dates and places with you too. One of the best things we've really enjoyed about you know meeting all the people are some of the amazing stories people have told us, really heartwarming ones. 
Um, I couldn't tell all of them, and I'm not sure people would want me to either, so I, I sure couldn't, you know, um, put them on the spot by telling their story. But I will share two with you. One of them, uh, this one was at the Knoxville store. It was actually, it wasn't nobody that actually showed up. It was somebody that, uh, it was somebody that worked there that actually gave me a, a letter from the manager there. And someone had called and asked for, asked about the book and they wanted them to put one back for them. They couldn't come to the signing, but they wanted them to see if they would hold it and, and then actually get me to sign it and then hold it for them. And it was to their niece. They wanted to give it to their niece. When the process of that phone call, the lady, nice lady, told uh, the manager there, said, I, I want to get my own book, but right now I have just I don't have much money, so I've just got to get it for my niece. And so if you get her to sign this, I'd really appreciate it. And so, of course, she said she would, and, and she got me to. But the really nice thing was the, the kind manager also purchased her a book. <laughs> So she got me to sign hers too, and so when she come to pick it up, she was gonna she was gonna make sure she got her a book too, and I thought that was just so kind. Uh, total stranger, didn't know her, but she just felt like after talking to her on the phone that she wanted her to have a cookbook too, and didn't want her to have to wait till she saved up more money. So I, that just really touched me that the lady was so willing to be generous to her niece and wait, but then also that the wonderful sweet manager you know, wanted to go ahead and make sure that she got one, so she gifted her one. I thought that was very, very sweet. Um, so then, in last week at our uh, event, in, we were in Swain County at the Swain County Genealogical and uh, History, what is the name of them? I better make sure I get it right here. Swain County Genealogical and Historical Society. So we were at that one, and different people come up and talk to us, and we met a man named Ronnie. Ronnie had a wonderful story. He made me cry. I started crying in front of everybody. I think he made us all cry. He had the sweetest, gentlest spirit. But he was from Ohio. And so he told us that his wife, Linda, she died, what, two weeks ago, I think he said? Two weeks ago from cancer, about two weeks ago. She'd recently died. And that she loved to watch our videos. And that, you know, she literally watched them in her days, her last days here on earth. And she just really loved them and she loved us. And uh, so he was glad that we were, we'd give her comfort during that, during that time. And so that was touching enough. I mean, that was just like, you know, blowed us away and just made us so sorry that he'd lost her, but so heartwarming and kind of humbling that she had enjoyed our videos. Well, then he told us after she died, he thought, you know, I need to just get away for a little while and get my thoughts together. And uh, they, he obviously and she obviously were really uh, had a strong faith in God. And he talked about that a lot. But he, he decided it was time for him. You know, he just wanted to, to kind of get away from home a little bit and, you know, work through his feelings and all that. Well, he went to visit his sister. I think he said Indiana. And then he decided he would come down to the Smoky Mountains because that's where his, he was into genealogy and that's where a lot of his family was from. And he'd actually been there before. He'd actually been to Swain County before and met some of the, I think uh, Mr. Dehart was one of his cousins that was there. So he'd been there previously, but so he decided he'd come down there and do some more family research and that would, you know, give him something to do. And so he said he got into town that day, the day of our, <laughs> of our event, and he went straight to the society there, to their, their little office, and, and went in and started talking to them and announced his, you know, introduced himself and told him why he was there and all that. And they were, oh, yeah, they'd help him in any way they could and, you know, talking, sharing stories about who his family members were and all that kind of stuff. But then they said, and tonight we're putting on a, um, our performance. We every an event, every month, once a month we have an event, and it just happens to be tonight, so you should come to that. He said, oh, okay, okay. And she said, and you can go right over here and there's a little thing that'll tell you all about it, like they had a little flyer. And so he goes over there and starts reading it and then he's like, it's Tipper. It's Tipper, <laughs> it's celebrating Appalachia. He had no clue, he didn't know, he didn't come for that or anything. So he really felt like that was like a, um, what do we call it, Corey, a lot of people call it God winking or something. Yeah. Like it was just meant to be that he had come from Ohio and kind of to, you know, work through his grief. And uh, it was just a beautiful, beautiful story. He shared part of his wife Linda's story. It was beautiful too. She had very strong faith and, and shared it with many, many people. And 
um, it was just wonderful touching to meet him. Uh, there's lots more stories like that too. Uh, the cookbook has been so rewarding. It was rewarding to begin with just for me and Jim to actually put it together because we love the southern foodways of Appalachia because this is where we're both from, you know, and it just means a lot to both of us. It's important that we put it all down. Jim, in his part of the talk, talked about putting it all down and there it is. It's all there for anybody that's interested. So all those things are important, uh, kind of for us personally and then for, you know, the kind of the region as a whole. But then I would have never dreamed that all these beautiful stories would have come out of it. I mean, you know, I, I hoped it would sell and, you know, that um, people would like it and all those kind of things. But I just never dreamed there'd be these heartwarming, touching stories that, mm, I, I better watch it or I'll start crying. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's but it will amazing. literally be with me for the rest of my life. And I thank Corey and Katie, too. And what he said is yeah. that he said special things like this from God, you have to store them down in your heart so you don't forget them. And I thought that was yeah. very sweet and a very good description. Yeah, and I will never forget uh, never forget Ronnie and Linda's story and the many others, too, that people shared with us. So we, we really, really appreciate that. And we hope if you can come out to one of them, we'd love to see you. We understand lots of people live way too far away. Um, and we understand that and we just appreciate your support by uh, watching our videos and uh, if you did buy a cookbook thank you so much and we'll, we'll leave the link below if you've not bought one but you'd like to buy one and I have had again people ask me recently well I can't come to a book signing but I want to support you by buying a book and uh, anything else I could do and I don't really say this a lot in my first videos I ever made I tried to say uh, what did, I don't even remember what I said, but subscribe and share subscribe. or something, but I quit doing that somewhere along the way. I hadn't done that in a long time. But that is a way to help us if you subscribe, if you subscribe to the channel. A lot of people watch it and they're not subscribed, and that's okay. Still watch it, but if you subscribe, that helps. And then if you, the little thumbs up, if you just click it every time you're going to watch one, that helps. And then it does help if you share it. Uh, and you can share it on other social media things, but I know a lot of people don't do social media other than maybe they watch YouTube videos. So another way to share it is just to tell your friend, your neighbor, your cousin, your brother, yeah. you know, tell someone about it. Um, so that helps us too, all those things, the like and the subscribing and the, um, and the sharing and commenting helps if you want to comment. And you can just say, you know, some people say, well, I don't know what I would say just say thanks i mean you can say hey hey tipper yeah <laughs> hey family whatever you don't have to say anything elaborate um and there's a lot of people too that watch it on roku on their tv and they can't comment that's okay too we understand just and you can't um it's harder i think you can subscribe but sometimes it's harder to figure that part out that's okay just keep watching watching is the main thing and it uh, really helps us out and we really really appreciate it i don't really say that I, I say that I appreciate you part, but I don't say, like I said, the, all the subscribe and like and all that when I did in the very beginning when I started, but it really does help. YouTube looks at that, and if you, if you, your video shows more engagement, people are liking it and um, subscribing and sharing it, then they, they show it to more people, in other words. So it, it really helps us celebrate Appalachia, which is my main goal. My main goal, talking about what a wonderful, wonderful area this is to live in. All right, got anything to add, girl? Nothing I can think of. Yeah. You ain't got no two cents. I'm in. getting sleepy. I hope no Corey's, one comments and it's yeah, like, Corey's looking just... Every time me and Corey do a, a update, Corey yawns. I think it's because I get still. I'm so yeah. bustling through. I'm the exactly day like Corey. If I get, get still, still I mean, it, whether I'm here in the house, wherever I'm at, I'm asleep in just you know a I few know. minutes. I go <laughs> to sleep. I can just instantly be you like can asleep. fall asleep in three minutes. I've I can. It. I can. Your daddy says thirty seconds till snore. <laughs> I would say that's an accurate description. Yeah, I can literally go to sleep anywhere. This morning on the way back from uh, the doctor's appointment in Blairsville with Miss Cindy, I said, Corey said she's getting sleepy. I said, I'm getting so sleepy. I can't, I can't stay awake. And Corey you said, said I, that. I think you better pull over and let me drive. You said that like right after you just slowed down yeah. in the straightaway. And I was like, is there something thinking? Are we stopping? And mom's like, I'm tired. I'm like, 
Okay, if you're that sleepy, then you need to stop yeah. and let me drive. And I didn't. I wasn't putting it together about me She's slowing like, what are down. You doing? I was. She said, "Do you need to pull over?" I was like, "No, I'm not that sleepy." And she, like, well, her, her, her and Miss Sandy down? both said, "Well, you slow down." I said, "Oh, I was looking at that. I was looking out the window. Somebody had or been something. doing something." Uh, over there, I was like, No, I'm not that sleepy. If I, I thought had you to, were, I was like, If you were falling asleep like, at the wheel, you'd get out right now. It's <laughs> like, If I had to stop in Bellevue and let you drive the rest of the way, that'd be pretty bad. Yeah, I'd be pretty bad. Although, worried. one time in the middle of the night when I took Pap to the VA, I made it all the way back to Marble and I had to stop. And I, he was sick, and I had to say, I, Daddy, I'm sorry, but I'm, you gonna, <laughs> I'm either going to kill us or you got a driver. I got to call somebody to come get us. And it was like three o'clock in the morning. He drove. Uh, and I remember that I told Matt, and he's like, "My Lord, I'd be ashamed if I couldn't drive the rest of the way from Marble." I said, "I literally could not stay awake. I was pinching myself to keep myself awake. That's how miserable I pulled in at the big well, D up at there least in Marble. You were, I was like, I can't, uh, I can't go no further." At least you were honest about yeah. it, so that way you know you're safe. Yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, but this morning I wasn't that sleepy. I was yawning, but I wasn't that sleepy. When you started slowing down and you're out <laughs> sleepy, I'm like, she's going to take us off the road. Uh, I just happened to be just slow. I was looking. Coincided. Yeah, it just happened to be right when I was saying that. I was actually looking out the window to, what do they call that, rubbernecking to see what was going on down yeah. there. I'd seen them moving some stuff, and I wanted to see what else was going on. So I was rubbernecking out the window. Yeah. Anyway. Well, as always, we hope you enjoy visiting with us for a little bit and we're sharing these updates. If you can make it out to Roanoke, we're looking forward to seeing you there uh, or in Boone or uh, Silva or any of the other places. But if you don't make it out, we're still looking forward to you watching our videos. We hope you continue to do that and interacting with you here on Celebrating Appalachia. I want a popsicle. <laughs> you want a popsicle? I don't need one. No, I don't need one. Let's do a thumbnail. Something like that? I guess. I don't know how I was holding it. I was probably like... <laughs> Look at the show! <laughs> That's probably pretty good. Let's do that one. Let me do it again. Like that? Yeah. I just was kidding yeah. though. When that was a loud noise, and I thought, is Jesus coming back? <laughs> That's supposed to be a trumpet. I know. I just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, know, I know. But I am going to look off the bank and see. It sounded if, like a big branch. And Yeah, see if I can see a branch. That right, was an awful big squirrel. I know. I was like, if that's a squirrel, there must be two or three of them. Just, but even then. And then we had white chicken hen, or the hen here, come out just flying, flat. flapping. I don't know what she's yeah. doing. She just landed like, I'm yeah. here. Everybody, I'm yeah, here. I have arrived. Everybody can see me. She's been in there laying an egg. And she had I to guess. announce her. Brag about it to everyone. Yeah, way back out. <sighs> well, feel a little better? Yeah, I got to get them get moving though. I'm too sleepy. I got to. It's yeah. like I feel like a train or something that's slowed down. And I'm like, all right, we got to start Chugging turning the wheels up. again. <laughs> So I can keep going for the rest of the day. Chugging. What I need to do is come out here and mow the yard. That ain't really that bad. I'll I'd, I'd be honest, like, if it was me and Austin didn't insist on mowing it, I'd mow my grass like once a month. It just gets so tall, man. It does, but... I want to do a garden video, but it ain't nobody today. I know. I was thinking about you mentioning the salad video. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could go home and film probably a short video about that and have it for next week. Cause I'm gonna make one, but then the other part of me is like, mm. but it'd be so easy. Yeah, I think your salad dressing would be really a hit. Well, I mean, it's not mine. Well, I mean, I know you could link to that. I don't. You but don't I mean, I think it's... I could just say, hey, I'm gonna make it eat salad today, but I'm gonna show you this show stuff and, and I'll put, dressing. Yeah, and put you where and put in the link to the people uh, in the description it. where I found it. I've done that on several. Yeah. I put the original recipe because I because you, you usually end up doing it slightly different. But that way they can go back and see and then read to their tips, whatever they said about it. Yeah. And yeah. I would, you know, even just sharing the information of, you know, unfortunately most salad, store-bought salad dressings got oils in it that are seriously inflammation. Yeah, and lots of sugar. Causing and lots of, of sugar. Too. So if you, if you can stand to make it at home. Yeah. You know, you're going to be better off. Somebody left me a comment about making mayonnaise. I've always wanted to make mayonnaise, but for the same know. reason. because yeah. it was. But I wonder how long it lasts in the refrigerator. I mean, Not I know it ain't going to last no three weeks, but would it last a week? 
Yeah, probably maybe. So if you made enough just for a week, because you yeah. wouldn't want to make it every time. You made a sandwich, you know. I know. Yeah. But I'd like to try it. I've always wanted to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It sure is. All right. We better get up and go. You know, there's a book, and I've seen it before. It come out, I don't know, I want to say maybe 2017, maybe. Uh, H is for Hawk. Mm -hmm. It's a fiction book. And uh, someone commented one time, I don't know, in the last month or so on the channel and said, you need to look up that book. And I remember seeing it. I wasn't obsessed with Hawks then, but mm -hmm. I just remember seeing it. I keep meaning to buy it and read it. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. The wind. Pretty sky. The wind has continued all spring. It's been pretty windy. Yeah. 